Hi, I'm the Rap Critic, and these are the worst lyrics I just happened to hear in the last month. Let's get started. Spit a test the rest of your heart, the rest of the dark. Hello. We the best of the sharks, they love when we fart, and leave a mark. Okay, first off, if you leave marks when you fart, that, you need to wipe more thoroughly down there, because that's disgusting, that's not supposed to happen. And second, you might be thinking, well, it's not literally saying that he's leaving a metaphorical mark on the industry by metaphorically farting. Yeah, see, that's my point. Farting doesn't automatically leave a mark on your underwear. Busta, if your farts normally leave stains on your underwear, that is an accident. That is not supposed to happen. Bring it, bring it. Question, tell me what you think about me. That's not a question. Question, tell me how you feel about this. That, that's not a question either. Am I being too pedantic about this? Questions usually start with question words, like why or what. But if you start it with something like, tell me this, well, that's a demand. But you know what? I'm going to call it. This one's just me nitpicking. I mean, the point is the same. She wants to know what this guy thinks about just how independent she is. I buy my own diamonds and I buy my own rings. Although if she's an independent woman, it shouldn't really matter what a guy thinks about her financial stability. But whatever, it's a rhetorical question. Like, huh, yeah, you didn't think women could make their own money. Well, what do you think about this? Charlie's Angels, come on. Come on. Oh, yeah, this was the lead single for the Charlie's Angels movie soundtrack from back in the day. But they only answer to me. My name is Charlie. Because, you know, nothing delivers the message of a modern upheaval of patriarchal society than three conventionally attractive women at the beck and call of a rich and powerful old man. Feminism. Hey, now that I think about it, I've always heard Independent Women Part 1, but I don't think I ever heard Part 2. Yeah, I've literally never heard it before. Well, let me look it up. Oh, hey, here are the lyrics, and they look... Wait, this is basically the same song again. Well, if it's just a remix, just call it a remix. Don't let the first one be called Part 1 like you're going to expand on some thematic elements you just didn't have time to get to in the first part. Well, fine, it's a remix. Well, what does it sound like? Maybe I've heard it before. <laughs> Well, this wasn't the sound I was expecting. Seriously, what the hell is this music supposed to be? The original version with the muted synth chords there sound bold and dignified and aided the singers in projecting a sense of confidence. This sounds like a goofy cartoon from the 50s. In fact, wait a minute. Yeah, I was right. This is literally the intro to that Peabody's Improbable History cartoon show from the 50s. What the... Did MF Doom produce this? Why the hell would they use goofy sounding music from a silly cartoon show for what's supposed to be a serious female empowerment anthem? What you think about a girl like me? Drive my own car and spend my own money. Wait, that melody. Da, 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 that that's circus clown music. Who the hell thought this was a good idea? And for you music majors out there going, well, actually, it's originally supposed to be about gladiators. Yeah, okay, smart guy, no one thinks that when they hear this music. It's silly, and you know it sounds silly. And what's this I'm seeing? This one was supposed to be the original? Ugh. Yeah, I don't think that would have worked. Unless they were going for the strong, independent clown woman demographic, in which case, yeah, they nailed that. I don't know, am I wrong here? I feel like, as a guy, I'm, like, not the right person to criticize this, but... Come on, this is kind of whack, right? Is that just me? All right, fine. Just hate me in the comment section. Fifty grand, I get this on one take. So we all know what One Minute Man is about, right? It's basically a coy, semi-joking warning to her lover, telling him that if you're gonna be with her tonight, you better have some stamina and be able to please her. But then Jay Z decided to get on the track, and there's something about Missy Elliott that just brings out the worst in this guy. Look, I'm not trying to give you love and affection. Uh -huh. I'm trying to give you 60 seconds of affection. Uh -huh. 60 seconds of perfection. Yeah, maybe for you, you realize 60 second man is not a compliment, right? Like it's supposed to be an insult. And no, this isn't about how he's gonna make her climax in 60 seconds. Nah, no, you're being way too optimistic. It's about finishing as soon as possible on his part and sending them home immediately. I'm trying to give you cash fare and directions. Get your independent out of here. And the funny thing is, he's trying to spin it like, oh, he just doesn't care about how the women feel anyway. He's just trying to get his, you know? Which, incidentally, sounds like the exact type of ego shielding that a one minute man would have in the first place. Get your independent out of here. Question? Was that a reference to the independent women song? Well, Beyonce married him, so she must not have minded too much. But I still don't get it. 
who would hear a song about dissing men who can't sexually satisfy women and think, you know what I need to do for the remix? Paint myself as the self-serving douchebag women hate when it comes to sex. That ought to go over well with a female rapper's audience. I don't even think he realizes how bad he's making himself look in these bars. Like, yeah, you can make the argument that he's doing it on purpose, like he's trying to make himself look bad to play up a character he's putting on, but I don't think Jay-Z's the type of guy to sacrifice his ego for the sake of a remix verse. I'm not your man, not Ralph Trez Van, not Ronnie Romance. Listening to it, it's clear he legitimately thought it was cool to straight up tell women not only does he not care about their orgasm, he won't even last long enough for that to be a factor for him. I'm trying to hit you, then put you in the middle of the round like I'm Roberto Duran. No mas. Wait, that's a reference to the Hispanic boxer who gave up during the Sugar Ray fight in the 80s. Since when do rappers metaphorically brag about being a boxer who lost? So, after all that talk about how you don't care about her satisfaction anyway, you then compare your sexual prowess quite literally to someone who wasn't strong enough and gave up? Spent one minute trying to got out. The other 14 trying to put it in her mouth. I don't think she's gonna be in the mood for a blowjob, bruh. And let me get this scene straight. You just humped her for one minute, obviously didn't get her off, and then you're going to spend 14 minutes trying to convince her to help you get off again? Do you really need 14 minutes to figure out that she's not gonna help you get off twice when you couldn't even help her get off once? I mean, he says he's trying to put it in her mouth, which either means he's spending that time either trying to convince her and it's not working, or he's just flailing his flaccid penis near her face and it's just not getting hard again. Now be a nice wife, you run home to your hubby, cause we both know what we doing is wrong. Don't forget to put your ring back on. <laughs> and, of course, we have to end the verse with revealing that he's having sex with a married woman. Because, for some reason, rappers really need their sexual conquests to, in some way, involve emasculating another man by quote-unquote taking his woman. Exacerbated by the ultimate punchline that he's not even that good in bed in the first place. Hey, Beyonce. Question? Yeah, I've got one. Um, what the hell did you see in him? Other than the ability to make a lot more money if you two were together. So, yeah, okay, I, I guess I see that.